one question I am asked is whether Almighty Allah is the only guide. Now, we have to understand a couple of very basic points here. Almighty Allah is a primary guide, is the ultimate guide. In fact, everything is from Him. All guidance, all righteousness, all good and evil, all help, everything is from Him. But then He has decided to delegate and give permission and grant authority to others to guide and to help and to intercede. Let us not confuse the primary and ultimate with the delegated and the authorized. And do not assume that the delegated or authorized person, that person is a normal and weak and useless person. No. The Khawarij would like us to believe that. That's what they're peddling. No. Once someone has Allah's authority, once someone has Allah's a permission they become super important super special and essential for us to receive guidance from them essential for us to receive help from them essential for us to ask help from them they are not to be dismissed or ignored or belittled Almighty Allah has made them special and if they are special to him they must definitely be special to us and must be respected by us and therein is the problem the Kharji wish people to only go to their misguided scholars and their misguided teachers, not to go to the righteous people. That's their whole objective. Our beloved Prophet وسلم, has already explained Al Khawarij Kilabun Nar, they are dogs of the fire. We don't want to be guided by the dogs of the fire. And we don't want to be in the position where we are calling Muslims mushriks, Narudu Billah. Uh, and in doing this they also teach their arrogance and they teach their anger and as part of their teachings they wish for people to believe that the Prophet وسلم, is just a man like you and me the Billah May our Almighty Allah forgive me for saying this but they make him to be seen as a normal simple weak human who makes m mistakes and errors as the Kharji or, or whose, whose dialogue we, we have already discussed Nowhere does it say, my dear audience, in the Quran or Hadith, that this is the case, that is, he's a normal, weak individual who makes errors. Nowhere. Yes, it says he's a man, definitely. A human being, definitely. But not an ordinary human being. The best man, the best human, the best example. In fact, the greatest of creation. And the per most perfect of creation. In Allah khalaq al khalq the Prophet said وسلم, indeed Allah created the creation and made me the best of the creation so let us not tell let us not fall into the hardy trap that we should not allow them to play their silly little games working on people's arrogance on people's ignorance and on people's egos working on their pride making people disrespect our Prophet وسلم, and reject verses of Quran because if you misinterpret, then you, you reject. And when ignoring, and then ignoring Allah's people, belittling them, rejecting them as well, and then calling other Muslims mushriks and kafirs and bidatis, this is a kharji way. Our beloved Prophet وسلم, has already stated about the kharjis, dogs of the fire. And uh, again, I, I'm going to say we should not be guided or not follow the dogs of the fire. We should know also that these people go by different names in modern times. But their attitude and their approach and their belief system is the same. We should recognize that their signs as our Prophet has taught us وسلم, and explained to us. We should recognize their signs because the signs are the same. Their arrogance and disrespect and anger etc. Their whole Aqidah in fact is based on maybe a dozen verses of Quran and maybe a dozen ahadith and that's it and all deliberately misinterpreted and misunderstood everything else is essentially ignored every other verse is ignored they have not been described as people of the fire for no reason and we finally we should clarify and explain about the authority that Almighty Allah grants his blessed servants and this should inshallah complete this short discussion and just a couple of points on this the first is about life and death if you ask anybody 
who gives life and death? And everybody will answer, Allah gives life and death. It all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know, He has assigned angels to take life, hasn't He? The angels come and take life. He even gave Hazrat Isa alayhi salam the power to give life to the dead. As He says in Quran, and Allah quotes in Quran, Uhi al maut bi idhnillah, I give life to the dead. Allah has given me the permission. He has given me the authority. I have this permission. And this is in Quran. So he has, he has that authority, that ability. And the second is about a wasila or intermediary. Again, this is a very misunderstood term. He needs a special lecture, but let's try and understand the basics. A famous and popular speaker, Zakir Naik, for example, has stated that there are 25 verses declaring wasila to be haram. 25. Now, when any normal person hears this, they will completely believe that and if you actually look at these verses Almighty Allah is not making wasila haram of the righteous people he's making the the idols haram as wasila that's what he's saying Almighty Allah condemns the mushriks who use the false gods as intermediaries as their wasila and in fact it is clear within an, the, an actual verse of Quran that this, this doesn't apply to Muslims this applies to mushriks. And for Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah wa badahu ilayhi al-wasila. He is telling Muslims, the believers, to find a wasila. You who believe, fear Allah and seek a wasila. Seek out an intermediary to approach him and struggle in his way so that you may be successful. We are told to find a wasila. And don't forget asking the dua after the Adhan, what do we ask in this dua? وَآتِ مُحَمَّدًا wasila. We are asking the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as a wasila. And this dua you find in Sahih al-Bukhari, which everybody reads. Even those who reject people as wasila, they read this dua and they ask this. So according to Zakir Naik's teachings, a wasila is haram. We should not make this dua after Adhan. We should reject this verse. وَبْدَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ Because uh, as far as he's concerned, it's haram. And when he's asked about this, he's, he hasn't answered. This is a harji influence seeing the light of day. Yes, false idols as intermediaries are haram. But righteous people as intermediaries are part of Islam, are actually instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are dozens of verses I can use and show for the importance and permissibility of wasila and for intermediaries for Muslims as people and even as objects and dozens of ahadith actually there's one example the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yashfa that they will intercede on the day of judgment for people the prophets the scholars and the martyrs. This is Ibn Majah. And Shifa is an act of intercession. Uh, in Shifa, you actually use a wasila. So, if there is one message about the Quran that we can learn here, we should learn that we must be careful when quoting Quran. We should know to whom Allah is addressing, and we should know the complete information about the subject that Allah is conveying. As a final example, there's, there's one verse of Quran, فَوَيْلُلْ Musallin. This is a complete verse. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And in this verse, Allah condemns those who pray. Woe to those who pray. So do we take this verse? Do we take it out of context and base our whole Islam and belief system on this verse and give speeches and say pray, prayer is haram and, and quote this verse? Is that what we're going to do? And we, then we start condemning those who pray? Or do we quote the next verse which clarifies the situation? الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Allah, then we realize Allah is not condemning those who just pray. Allah is condemning those who pray, who pray out of show, who, who pray to show off. In other words, Allah condemns those who are acting. They are not praying for what's inside. They're not praying out of, uh, 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 out of happiness and eagerness. They're praying to show off. They, are, they want their Oscar. 
That's why they are praying. They are performing for the audience. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ condemned those who give their own twisted opinion of Qur'an. Because it's a wrong opinion and goes completely against the actual Qur'anic teachings and completely against the teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad So let's avoid the games and tricks and false speeches of the Khawarij and their supporters and their colleagues making halal, haram, changing Islam to suit their own twisted opinions belittling our Prophet and belittling his special people, Allah's special people. Let's stick to the truth and the righteous people and the righteous guides. Let's stick to the haq and we shall be rightly guided inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.